Well, folks, what we're going to do today is the classical back massage, the 15-minute special. You ready, Jerry? Ready, Christine. Great. So I'd like to position you face down with your head at this end of the table. Great. And for you folks at home, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to have the person nice and comfortable because this is going to be about 15 minutes of relaxation and tuck it into their underwear or their bathing suit and make sure that they're discreetly draped to the lower back, not the waist. We want to include this section down here in our massage so it must be exposed for us. And warm up your oil by rubbing it onto your hands and then rub your hands vigorously and quickly and over the target area. Don't rub them over the new rug or anything else. You want it right where the oil is landing. That should get them nice and hot. Okay, and then walk up to the head of the person and we're going to start with a stroke called effleurage. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Good. And we start at the shoulders on down the back. To the lower back, use the palms of your hands, glide back up and loop around and use your body weight, lean onto your hands, use all the body weight you have and right up again. And this is a great way to introduce the person to your touch, gets them relaxing and the nice thing is that it relaxes you. That's what's really important. If I'm relaxed, he's going to be relaxed and walk around to the side of the person and start this stroke that is called ringing. Now, make sure they're well rung. So you don't want to have your hands too light or they'll look like this. Get a good uh into it and grip them. So you need to bob up and down a bit to get your body weight into this stroke and really use your muscle. Pull and push, and pull, and push, good, and now come into one side at a time, and this will help focus the stroke so that you get even more mileage out of this when you make it a bit more local. So this one-sided stroke is called unilateral ringing, so let's get right up to the shoulder. See right down, let my hands curve right around and back. So push and pull all at the same time. And then go on down the back again. So make sure that your strokes are fluid and slow. It'll keep it nicely relaxed. Now, when you come to the side closest to you folks, you'll find it a bit more awkward. But bend your wrists and it'll be so come right down, let the wrist bend right down to the table, okay? So don't just be up here, take it way back and make it thorough. And once again, don't be stingy on the shoulders, get right in there. Give them a nice generous stroke to the upper trapezius, this big muscle up here that defines the shoulder. Now, Jerry's like all you folks at home, he could do with a half hour of ringing to the upper trapezius. However, we're going on to the next stroke, okay? So let's just give him a bilateral ring. And the next stroke is called reinforced palmer kneading. So I want you to put one palm on top of the other and then make circles. This time, if you've noticed, I've moved my body around so that I can lean more onto my hands. So it's like rock and roll, okay? So forward and lean back, and lean forward, and back, and forward, and back. One, two, one, two. And I want the direction of pressure going away from the spine. No fair charging into a spine and rearranging it any differently than the way in which you started. So I want you to lean the pressure up and out. Okay, so when you come to this side, also, up and away from the spine, and lean, and lean. Okay, use your body weight, and lean. 
So you can see I'm dividing up Jerry's back into about four or five nice Palmer kneadings. Okay, now we're going to go into something a bit more fancy. Don't worry, you'll be okay. It's just that most of you aren't quite as ambidextrous as I am, so that this stroke, which is alternate thumb kneading, will look a bit more like this or like this. This is a typical amateur. So your stroke will look something like this, I'm sure, unless you play the piano or something wonderful like that, and then it'll look just like mine. So I want you to practice up here around the shoulder area. Alternate thumb kneading takes one little thumb circle over the other. Okay? Okay. So let's go down these long muscles that run parallel to the spine, about an inch away. And they're called erector spinae. So guess what they do? Yeah. They keep the spine erect. So come on down this wonderful set of erector spinae down into the lower back. And we're going to go along the iliac crest. Now that sounds like some kind of mountain, but really it's going to be the upper levels of his hip. And this has large attachment of muscle right up into the arm. So you can see by working the iliac crest with your alternate thumb kneading, this is going to help the relaxation spread all the way up into his shoulder area. Right, Jerry? And check the pressure as I'm not doing. I want you to be a lot better than this. You must check with the person to see that the pressure is perfect for them. So sometimes you can work where your pressure will be too light for the person on the receiving end. And that's not going to make the perfect massage. And since we're out to show you the perfect massage, Jerry, how's the pressure? Great. I work best under pressure anyway. So can it be a little bit more? Is that better? You can always apply more. Okay, good. And when you get fit athletic types, like you might have on your hands at home, usually you can lean on them a bit more than what you would do at the beginning. So now you should have adapted your pressure to a nice, steady, firm grip. Okay. Let's go on to something else. We want to move from the thumbs. We'll give them a good shake. And this kind of shake doesn't work, folks. I want a good uh, shake to your hands, and that will freshen them up. And we're going to go into reinforced fingertip, exactly like it sounds. One set of fingertips on top of the other, and arch the hand, OK? So that actually I'm pivoting my wrist. But notice the rest of my body isn't like this, OK? So drop those shoulders, relax, and just work all into the same areas as the alternate thumb kneading. And is that firm? Good. OK. And work all down the back on the erector spinae muscle all into the iliac crest and pivot those fingers. Now let's slow it down a little bit and see where his favorite spots are. Now what I mean by favorite spots are those spots that he's hoping I spend all my time on. He's hoping I forget about all the rest of it and just spend some time on the particular areas that bother him. So where would that be, Jerry? Right there. Aha. So this is what makes it the perfect remedy. You want to make sure that the person is able to get all their expectations met, and all you have to do is talk to them. They're right on the receiving end of this massage, and it keeps them wide awake. So remember, you want to keep them fairly awake so they're ready to work on you when we're finished. Okay, so let's see if he's got any favorite spots up in here. These little muscles, folks, are called rhomboids, and they're short little tight ones in here. Most of us have got some favorite spots up in the rhomboids. I think we've got them well worn out. Before we move on to the next stroke, I want you to notice that the pressure of this stroke is the same thing. It's up and away from the spine, OK? So be well behaved with your pressure. I want it up and out, up and out. OK, 
And once again, give your hands a good shake. <sighs> ready for the next? You ready for the next, Jerry? I'm ready. Good. Okay. What we're going to do now that we've had them well poked is smooth things out. Okay, so let's go back to our Palmer kneading and smooth everything out. We'll just take it nice and slow. Remember, lean onto it. Lean onto it. And this is always a good time to get them to take a good deep breath, which means you're going to take a good deep breath. Most of you will be very conscientious. You'll be worrying if you're doing it the right way and you're very serious, like myself. You need to loosen up a bit and relax and enjoy what you're doing. And since the stroke is familiar to you, just take a good deep breath, Jerry. Good. And then that just gives me a chance to relax, too. Great. Okay, now let's put an effleurage on from this aspect. So instead of going up to the head like we did, I want you to lean this way. And right up. Be generous on the shoulders. And back. Good. You warming up now? Okay, now remember we want to invigorate the situation. You want to get their enthusiasm to a high pitch because you're going to be switching places soon. So we're going to perk Jerry up with some enthusiastic topokment. Now that's actually all the percussion strokes that you see typifying massage. And we're going to start with the first one, which is loose fingertip hacking. Okay, it's like this. You hold your hand and you flick your other fingers onto it. Hear that sound? That's good loose fingertip hacking. So keep them loose and keep it moving. And you folks will find that your stroke will sound a bit like this and that is absolutely typical for a beginner. Don't worry about it. Just shake out your hands and go again. And you'll find that your hands refresh themselves and they're much more coordinated if you stop and loosen them up and then try it again. Don't wait for them to get coordinated. The body just doesn't work like that. And shake them out and away you go. Should also get your huff puffing your way along here because it takes a bit for your cardiovascular to keep your old hands pummeling away at this speed. Okay, so the next stroke is stiff fingertip hacking, just like it sounds. It's a bit of a chopping motion. So let's chop away on these trapezius muscles up here and just work into that shoulder. Is that firm enough, Jerry? No, it isn't. Can I go a little harder? Sure. Okay. There we go. Okay, and bring it on down the back. Woo! Shoulders. Here we go. Good. Let's go on to cupping. It's got a nice kind of hollow shape to the hands and make sure the fingers are curved. Now, I'll show you what not to do, but I don't want any of you practicing this. I just want you to see it, hear it, and never, never do it. Okay? So, this kind of thing, you can tell right away. It's a no-no. It's too much sting, it's uncomfortable, and we're going to convert it into cupping. So this soft, hollow, resonating sound is perfect cupping. When you've got the right stroke, then lean on it. It sounds terrible, it feels wonderful, right? Right. right. Okay, and what we've got to finish is beating. Tuck in your knuckles, tuck in your thumb, and we're going to flip-flop the wrist. And once you've got the right flop to those wrists, away you go. And we have a great finale of pounding. Make little fists, it's going to be okay. If you tighten them up, you get a nice little cushion in your little finger area and then you want to roll it towards you. So no rebounding, I want a nice gentle rolling, especially in the lower back area. This is where you can spend a bit of extra time. The sacrum is right in the middle. It's a nice flat bone you can roll away on. And on up into the rhomboids, the upper trapezius. 
Oh, good. We're finished that part. The last set of strokes are much more gentle. They're without any pressure using your fingertips. This is usually a, I call it a pussycat stroke. So if you've got a cat, then you've already done this stroke. Lightly with the fingertips. You can go any direction, it doesn't matter. You can do it like we did the ringing, nice and light, all the way up and down. And it's a wonderful way to finish up the massage and get them ready to work on you. Now, I want you at the end to keep them nicely covered up. Give them at least 30 seconds to relax before they've got to get up and get busy giving you a massage. And just take a good deep breath at the end, Jerry. And that gives me a chance to relax. I don't feel like I need a massage after I've given one. I just feel like I've had some good exercise. And breathe again. You ready to do me now? 